All right, team, kia ora, and welcome to episode 20 of Yarns with Beef and Matt, brought to you by Alice KD and Frog Grips. I'm Beef. I'm Matt. And today we are joined by an up and comer. He came in at fifth Victorian this year. He's a, he's a name to keep an eye on, Mr. Peter Ellis. How are you, bro? Yeah, pretty good. That's it. How's, pretty your, fun. how's your morning been? Yeah, good. Nothing too crazy. Like normally I'd be at the gym now, but I'll just push it back a little bit later. Yeah. Do an extra session. Making time for your boys. We love that. Making time for the boys. <laughs> How <laughs> good, man. So whereabouts are you uh, your Sydney, you're saying? Um, so Blue Mountains. No idea. <laughs> uh, it's about an hour out of Sydney. Right. Okay. Um, more bush. Yeah. Oh sweet. <laughs> a bit more bush, but um it's good out here. Just yep. go in the gym, nothing too crazy. Go down and train in Melbourne every now and then as well. Yeah. Um, with Jay and Mads. Because Mads used to um train up here. She oh, okay. actually showed me a lot of um like the movements and stuff when she oh, first sick. started. She was a coach. Yeah. Yeah, because so that's I, pretty crazy. Had a look on your profile. You've you started pretty young. You're sixteen. Yeah, yeah. I started like sixteen. Yeah. Um, did you make it very far in the teenage division? I only did only in the teenage division like one year. And then, like, oh, maybe I was 17. Either way, I was yeah. only in it for, like, one year. So, I'd only been doing, like, CrossFit for, like, three months. And then I did the Open as a teen. And then, apparently, because I turned 18 before the Games in the 2020 season or something, oh, you I went to that. the adult division. Yeah. Oh, so, I never really did that much teen stuff. All oh, right. Yeah, no worries. No stress. Yeah. Oh, well. Before we get uh, too carried away, we're, the way we usually like to start these off is um, get a bit of a background on you, on uh, young Peter Ellis before CrossFit. Uh, what was he up to, bro? Yep. Yeah, just... oh, sorry, I cut out a little bit. But um, yeah, before CrossFit, I was playing um, rugby league, a bit of footy, running around, um, being a bit of a menace yeah. here and there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd just keep active. Yeah. Is that just school level sort of rugby league or competitive or? Oh, not super competitive. Honestly, like I wasn't, I I, I love during school, like those last couple of years, I loved a bit more of a party sort oh, of vibe yeah. <laughs> um, and CrossFit actually settled me down a little bit. So yeah, no, nah, how good. Yeah. Um, so Sydney, New South Wales, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Sydney, New South Wales. So Blues fan? Yeah, Blues fan. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What are we saying? Up the Maroons. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Every, you know. every Kiwi's a Maroons fan, apparently. Come on, <laughs> Come on now. No. Anyway. So, so um, where along the journey did you start taking CrossFit? Yeah, seriously. How did that come about? Um, So, in 2019, like I'd just been doing CrossFit. I might have been doing it for about six months or something at that point. My dad actually took me over to America to watch the games. Mm-hmm. Oh, sick. Watching that and like seeing everyone compete and like being in the Coliseum and stuff, I pretty much got addicted. Like yeah. from then I'm like, okay, I want to come back here. But as obviously an, an athlete. athlete. Yeah. So you wanna... was your dad pretty into CrossFit before you? No, he no? didn't even really know about it. I just started it. Yeah. And like told him about it. And he said, well, why don't we go like, yeah. He said, why don't we go over there and oh, have a look? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. We went over and checked it out and yeah, yeah. got addicted. Oh, how good. I've just been trying to get back ever since. Yeah. That's well, it. you were pretty fucking close this year, man. Fifth place. Pretty close. Yeah. Couple spots off, but um, yeah, keep working on it. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you, um, what'd you think of Tori in this year? How, how, were the, how were the workouts and challenges coming along for you? Yeah. The, I thought Tori was, I think Tori is a fucking awesome event. Yeah, bro. It's great up there. Great arena. I like just awesome and I, I liked all the events i thought it was good like to be honest i can't really even say i don't like the events like if i do bad and suddenly it's my own personal mm. thing i've got to work on not yeah. really the programming yeah um so yeah just try and get a bit stronger i think mm. um and we should do well next year that's yeah, the plan bro. anyway yeah we we're going to touch on um what sort of the training plan looking over the next oh it'll be probably like under like six or eight months but what's um What's the schedule? Yeah, what's the schedule look like for you, bro? So I got down under in four weeks now, so it's pretty close. Mm-hmm. You on team so or individual? I'm individual. Yeah, nice. I'm going into into this year, so I got yeah. that in about four weeks. Yeah. So I just yeah, heaps of fitness at the moment, trying to get fit for that. Mm. We'll have obviously a little bit break, bit of a break over December, like just pull back a little bit. Obviously, still training. 
and then just ramp it up next year for the beginning of next year all the way to Torian. Yeah. Sort of strength, more, more strength dominant at the beginning of the year and then more sort of ramp up the fitness mm. as we leave the Torian again. What's, uh, who does your programming? Matt Riley. He, um, he used to be like, he was, he went to regionals from 2013 to 2017 or oh, okay. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of an OG. Yeah, um, a bit of an OG. And he just does his own programming. He doesn't follow proven or anything like that. No, no, he doesn't. D- does does a, a full personalized program for me and stuff. Sick. And, um, yeah, he's a gun. Yeah. Shout out, Matt Riley. Um, yeah. So going Riley. back to Torian this year, um, fifth play. Did you were you Torian last year at all? I did go to Torian yeah. last year, but like, oh, like I just didn't do super well. It was my first year last year. Right. Uh, I think I came twentieth or something like that. And then Very new experience. Year. Never done a individual comp before at that point. Fuck, really? That was your first indie comp. First indie comp. Oh, yeah, shit. Not a bad one. <laughs> yeah. Ever. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it was like a fair, like, yeah, just hadn't really experienced it before. Went out very hot in a lot of the workouts. Yes, yeah, as you just do. From the, just the adrenaline. <laughs> like, I've gone out hot of the gates. What is it, King Arthur? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a... doing all the bullshit at the, at the start and then running out that door. I was puffing. Yeah. That's the one that um leveled Ricky Garade. Eh? That was yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. That was a it was a red hot workout. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay. I didn't think burpees could be so slow in that back half. <laughs> I'm like pushing at max speed and I watch the video, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Folks, get up. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> um, so fifth place this year, did that surprise you? Or was that exactly where you wanted to be in that top half or? Um yeah, like I, I was happy with fifth, but to be honest, I don't care about anything else out of that top three. Yeah. Oh, wow. So like, Amazing. no, like oh, I was happy with fifth. Fifth I is good. Like, like it's good. I've made a big improvement from last, like the first year I went, like from 20th to fifth is good. Mm. But like the placing at semifinals isn't a huge deal to me. Like I just want to make it get into that top three or whatever the spots happen to be. I mm. think Ricky and Royce are also coming back Indy next year. So it'll be pretty yeah. competitive, but. Who cares? And Beto. Give it a good crack and um, yeah. Yeah. Goals just to get to the games and then it's start tight. to dominate over there. It's tight up there, man. Like you said, yeah. Royce, uh, Ricky, uh, Baden Brown might be coming back. And then you've got yeah. Jay, who's just a fucking world beater. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. It's going to be it's gonna be exciting to watch last, uh, next year. So we'll be fucking looking at yeah, you, bro. Yeah, be very competitive, mm. but there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. 100, 100%. That's a good mindset to have too, like, top three or not bothered yeah but um yeah we, we wanted to jump on and have a chat with you because both bailey and jay have been talking you up that you are a name to watch out for they're, they're keeping an eye on you by the mm. sounds of it but right. um yeah yeah we, we both said oh just anyone you, you're looking out for out. without Sorry, even oh, oh, are we back? We yeah, back? Yeah, back yeah back so, now. yeah like without a hesitation like um yeah both of them peter ellis so I think you've already got a bit of a target on your back, man. So I thought we'll, we'll get him on here before he blows up. And he's on every other fucking podcast. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you been training quite a bit? I did see a photo on your Instagram. Do you train quite a bit with Jay? Yeah, yeah. Like I go, like he's, when he comes up with Mads, like um, we normally get in a session together. Yeah. Or I've gone down and actually stayed with him um, for a week or two in the lead up to Torian this year and trained together. Mm. Um, yeah, like me, me and him are friends now and, we get along quite well. It's always good to train with him because it's a good push. Like mm. I train a lot. I train alone quite a lot up here. Okay. Mm. Um, so it's always good to train with someone else and you just get that bit of a competitive yeah. vibe. Yeah. See where you're at. Um, yeah. How, how old are you, bro? I'm 21. All right. So you're still quite young. Okay. Fresh yes. as. Um, Fuck yeah. Your mindset, just already listening to you now, you're saying, you know, you don't care about you, fifth place. There's a lot of people that would love to come 30th at Torian. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. a big goal to get to Torian. And you're already saying, nah, if I'm not top three, I don't care about it. What? The first the first year was definitely a celebration. Like, yeah, the yeah. first year I made it to Torian, I was like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah. I've yeah. made it to some finals. Like, I've hit like I've hit the goal, like, sort of in my timeline or whatever. Yeah. But the second year I went there, it's like, okay, I've made, I've made it before. I was pretty confident I was going to make it back that year. Mm. Now it's like, next goal. So where where do you or who do you attribute that mindset? Have you always been like that? Just goal-driven, like I need to be the best? Or yeah, where, where do you sort of attribute that 
mindset um, from? I've always felt like there's got to be more than just a nine to five. Like, I don't mind work and big hours and stuff, but I mean, I've got to be passionate about something. Yeah, like if yeah. I'm not passionate about it, like I'm a, I'm a plumber now, like I've done my plumbing qualification, all that stuff yeah. straight out of school, things like that, but just something missing. Yeah. Like I don't mind the work. It was fine, but like something I'm passionate about, something that fires me up. Like yeah. really, I just feel like there's more to life. There's got to be something that's like, you just go, can go crazy for, you know? That's yeah. sick, man. It's, yeah. you, you can hear it in your voice, eh, bro? And it's yeah. like, yeah, similar thing. And I'm sure Matt knows this as well it's like so many people you watch them just sort of float through life and they're like oh yeah i just do this because mm. it pays the bills and fuck it it's awesome to see people driven out there to find that thing that lights their fire and they can do that every day it's fuck refreshing it. man yeah yeah like i don't want to just wake up in the morning and just go through the motions like i want to wake up excited and ready just to like even if i'm tired and sore because no one feels like training every day yeah. but at least i'm like okay i'm gonna get up and even if you're fucked i'm gonna work towards something bigger and more mm. meaningful like yeah get after it that's mm. that's fucking cool man um coming out of school did you did you know it was going to be crossfit i mean you started pretty young or were you thinking maybe go down the route of code or yeah well um so like i was only just starting crossfit when i left school mm. but i wasn't a big school guy like i was I was training pretty hard. Like I was doing a lot of more bodybuilding type stuff. Mm. Like I trained quite a lot. Like I was always quite into fitness and training and things like that. Um, but I felt like school was a bit pointless. Like I always was going to get a trade. So I thought leave it year 10 and just get something on them. Yeah. Oh. And then really when I went over to America to watch the games in 2019, that's when I'm like, okay, I want to go. Like I want to be back here. Yeah. Sick, man. Um, 2019, that following year. Was it that year the world shut down? It was twenty. It was it? Was, yeah, yeah. It was just after. So yeah. like we got we flew over like the year year four. Yeah. Or just before it, everything shut down and went crazy. Yeah. How that was, was um? How was the motivation through COVID? Uh, still just the same. Just yep. Crack on. Yeah, it was fine. Mounted a rig to the side of the house. Yeah. Just, and um, yeah. As you kept, do. <laughs> getting up, kept yeah. getting after it. Um, yeah, I've got, like I've, I've got a few mates that live very close to me. So they come over and train and stuff. So I still like had a, like, yeah, I still have people to train with them every now and then and stuff, but mm. I've gotten used, pretty used to training alone as well. Cause I do the same thing now. So it's not hugely different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when did you, so you decided fairly early you were going to go for a trade? Yeah. Yeah. Like I was always going to get some sort of trade. Yeah. Um, just because that's me, I, I can't, I couldn't, couldn't sit behind a desk all day. Yeah, I'm yeah. Too, Something just, with your hands, eh? Get out there and get yeah, it. Yeah, I'm too antsy. So, how long have you been plumbing? Um, I did plumbing. So I did four years, my four years of plumbing, and then as soon as I got my qualification, qualification, I quit, started coaching for a bit, and just training, um, sort of in all my spare time, and that's when I made touring that first year. Oh yeah. Yeah. And now I'm sort of like, I do part-time plumbing here and there. And then in the lead up to comps, like in the lead up to down under this year, I've stopped like sort of the four or five weeks out. And now I'm just training. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just putting all my time to training and recovering and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 It sounds like obviously the, um, getting back to the games is a huge goal for you, but is there any ambitions outside of CrossFit for you at the moment? Um. No, nah. <laughs> there, is, there is no other ambitions. The only ambition is to be like, yeah, to be great at CrossFit. And then any spare time I have outside of training, I normally just try and spend that with like friends and family and stuff. Yeah. And I guess it takes your mind off the pressure you put on yourself as well. Like seeing friends and stuff and just having, hanging out with them. Yeah. yeah. I do put a lot of pressure on myself to do well. Yeah. I think I'm not here. I'm like, I'm not here just for fun. I think like most high performing athletes like do that. I think it's just part of the part of the territory. But it's refreshing to hear like you did your school thing, you went and got a trade. Like that's a very this side of the world thing. I think everyone just fucking get yeah. a trade, you know? Um, which like you did for four years. It fucking probably taught you a lot, um yeah. that you're putting into your training now as well, I imagine. Um, and then to be able to just have the drive to know that you wanna achieve something else, something bigger, something greater than you. 
um, which you've found in CrossFit, which is amazing. I think it's a really good message for a fucking 21 year old. So like that's young as. So I think the fact that you're doing that now is massive. Sorry, bro. just frozen again. That's right. It was a massive motivational speech. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. But yeah, like like Matt was just saying, um, at 21 years old, I did not have that drive and ambition. So it's real refreshing to see. Mm. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, good on you, man. Yeah. Fuck there off. is a bit of like, like there's a bit of a time limit on the sport. Like your body can't perform at the highest level for your whole life. So if there's any time to go for it, yeah, it's definitely like it's now. Oh, That's it. Yeah, attest to that, man. Fuck your body betrays you real quick, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just um, just thinking on how's how has your commitment to CrossFit been with your sort of relationships? Yeah, like with friends, family, because I know you gotta you gotta commit to this to perform at the level that you do. Yeah, so like with training and stuff, I tend to be like you. You have to be a little bit selfish. Yeah, and I did have a partner like when I'm. What did we meet? We met like fifteen. Yeah, then we were together for six years, but eventually, like we called it just because I was so. I'm just so distracted with like chasing this big goal. I found like I didn't have enough time to have a full time relationship and go after this thing. Well, not that. So like I think she wanted more. Mm. Like she was like family, kids, house, and I was like gold medals, just do or die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort of. Didn't really care. Oh, I don't really care about that right now. Yeah. yeah. Was she? I'm into, sure I will. Was she into CrossFit at all? Nah, she wasn't really a huge CrossFitter. Because Bailey and Jay have both said that, eh? Mm. The fact that they feel like their relationships are so strong is that their partners do CrossFit and they're both obviously high-performing CrossFitters as well, so. Yeah, like, mm. yeah, again, if maybe it would have been more understanding if it was, um, maybe I need to find a CrossFit girl. <laughs> well, oh, good girls. Good, yeah, good uh, looking bloke. <laughs> getting his DMs. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, fuck, how... How did that affect sort of your mentality when, when all of that was going on? Um, look, it's all right. Like, again, I was like very much obsessed with CrossFit. So I kind of, yeah. anything that didn't have to, like wasn't to do with training, I kind of just found a way to shut it off, at least while I was training. Like once I walked into the gym, it was like the rest of the world stopped moving. Yeah. Like, I was just there to do what I had to do and get out. Yeah. 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 No, just saying, cause yeah, I, I'm sure we've all been through sort of some long-term relationships and yeah, it can, it can really mess with you mentally, but it's, it's good that you've found a way to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say shut it off, but I'd say you've found something else that you're more passionate about that you're happy to throw your life yeah. into. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Know. Like it's obviously a difficult situation, like ending something like is a difficult, like that you realize over time, it's like, hey, this is not probably going to work out. Like, mm. That's always difficult, but um, you just keep moving and eventually it passes. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. We're getting pretty deep here now, team. Um, <laughs> how's the rest of your family? Like, how, are your, how are your parents uh, real supportive, obviously? Seems like they would be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're super supportive. My dad's like so competitive. Yeah. Not real. Yeah. Super competitive. Like crazy <laughs> competitive. Yeah. Did he play any sort of competitive sports growing up high level um or? motorbike riding it was pretty competitive into that like enduro riding and stuff yeah um but then he like he got his like he stopped doing that he regrets stopping going after that and then just getting a trade and sort of stopping riding he wishes back when he was younger he just needed to put put more time into just like getting to a competitive level of that so yeah. now through like he sort of says to me he's like now's the time to get yeah. after it yeah, that's massive having that sort of background. The, the fact that he's been through it and regrets yeah. it, so he can just be like, mate, just fucking just go for it. Just go for it, yeah. yeah. Hard up, man. Handy. How's, how's mum? She get but uh bit nervous when you're under the big weights or Um She's all right. yeah, she's she's <laughs> alright. Mum Mum's good. Yeah. I'll do that, man. Yeah. Um Yeah, so coming into Torian this year was so obviously going to the games was the priority of that's what you were going there to get to do um how was how was your mindset coming out of that coming just shy just shy of the mark um 
like auditory and stuff, you're a little bit broken. Yeah. Like not not because I came fifth or just missed out. It's just like you train so hard. Well, I don't know about everyone else. I I can only speak for myself. But I mean, leading into touring, like I felt like I was training so hard, like. And I kept fucking myself. Like I kept having days where I couldn't walk or like I'd pull something in my neck and can't move my upper body. Mm. And I used to just have to like figure it out and find mm. what else I can do. Like maybe I went a little bit too crazy, but <laughs> maybe. you put so much into it. It's like, you're a little bit broken afterwards. Like you're like, fuck, how am I ever going to do that? Mm. You sort of just keep, you get back to life, keep moving. I started working again. Um, and then you just slowly get that fire built back up. I found like sort of a month after, a month or two after, I got that fire built back up. It's like, okay, let's go again. Yeah. Did you yeah. did you sort of take some time off and just go cold turkey on the on the training and just chill? <laughs> so the week after, I'm like, I've got to keep moving. I've got to keep moving. So I did this fucking stupid workout. I did a thousand pull-ups, a thousand push-ups, and a thousand air squats and a weight vest. That is not the workout you're giving us, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It was like, Mate, that's I felt like I didn't make it this year. I've got to do something crazy to prove I'm tough enough to make it. So yeah. I thought of that. Yeah. And then I fucked myself for like three weeks. Oh, All dude. my sh- couldn't leave my arms above my head. Oh, oh shit. Like couldn't move my shoulders or my arms. Like I was, I was pretty broken. My knee. Oh. Anyway, so I had a break after that. Yeah, <laughs> forced one for, like, for the remainder of the month, and then slowly started to get back into it. Did someone pull you aside and say, "Mate, look, this is this is a long game. This is not you, you didn't make it this year, but the, you're 21. You've got the next seven, eight yeah. years." Did, has anyone no, pulled my, you aside, or did you manage? My, my, to... my coach says this to me. He says, "Like, um, yeah, like you, it's a long game, but I'm yeah. very." impatient yeah well you're 21 so <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> no, I, don't, I, keep it, I get told this all the time yeah. but I, see i don't think i'm 21 i just think mm. there's a goal and yeah. i want to get it like, it's, it's good to hear man it's good to hear i coach uh, i coach a few athletes um and the younger ones are like that man especially the males fuck me yeah. um but uh, yeah, fuck, if I can give you an advice, bro, don't do a thousand pull-ups, a thousand <laughs> press-ups a, thousand, a fucking week after Torium. But um, yeah, man, hey. But yeah, like you say, it is refreshing because um, you see a lot of people with that potential, but they don't have the fire. Mm. Yeah. Like you see the way they move, you see the way they're lifting weights and shit, and you're like, dude, you could you could do it, but they're just like, nah. Yeah. So, so. It's hard to explain, like, oh, on the floor, the competition floor, so much adrenaline. Yeah, I bet. I feel like if there was an actual literal brick wall between me and the finish line, I could run through it. Yeah. <laughs> that's how pumped up I feel. That's sick, man. At Toria, no doubt. That's just, yeah, yeah. the, the like, energy in there. Is we were just, like, watching this year, and fuck, we were getting <laughs> pumped, man. So, being on the floor would be, be nuts. And, like, Jay and Bailey, and uh, I think even Jake said... um it's like more electric than the games. Like they get way more fight of a Torian than the games. So, bro, I don't blame you. <laughs> they run an awesome comp. Yeah, shit, yeah. Easily one of the best. 100%. Easily. Um, so, you, whereabouts are you training at the moment? What's the name of your gym? Plug that. Um, so, I train at um, a gym called CrossFit Generate mm. and a gym cro- called CrossFit Peak. I sort of go between the two. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, just one one's got a like a bit bigger bigger space. Yeah. So it can be ability to do bigger like handstand walks and rope climbs and things, and one's just like a little bit more, a little bit smaller. Yeah. So it just depends on like because there's classes and other people training and stuff. So I just go wherever's best for um right. yeah sort of for the training so I can get my own space and just get after it. Are you still coaching as well as training at the moment? No, I'm not coaching. I'm not doing anything at the moment. I'm just just training just training so for the next four weeks i'll just be training for down under at the end of the year yeah, yeah. what's what is the plan and for down under bro the plan is to win you've podium before eh? you come third podium. yeah last year i came third yes. which i was yeah. actually very surprised about that i didn't think i was going to and then like i got my first ever event win on day one i'm like fuck like I can do this let's go <laughs> like like maybe i can do do yeah. this crossfit thing and then yeah just kept on going and no that was a that was a great weekend and then mm. yeah this this year well i guess coming third last year the goal is to win mm. yeah. oh, man. who's yeah. um who else is in the indie males there i know there's quite a few teams going 
So is there any big There's names? There's quite a few teams. A lot, like, yeah, a lot of the boys are in teams. But um, Douglas is coming as an indie, I believe. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then on the on the qualifiers, sorry, I'm trying to think of the qualifiers leaderboard. Yeah. Um, Zach Thomas and Zane. Will um, Kearney? Is Will Kearney going to be there? No, I don't think he is. Oh, that's a shame. Okay. That would have been a good battle. Yeah, I don't think he is. I, I, I don't. I don't know exactly who's going to be there. I just know, I know, yeah, Zach Thomas and Zane were up there on the leaderboard. Actually, yeah. Jay's brother, Toby, he's going oh, to be there as well. How good. Yeah, Jay was saying he's up and coming. How yeah, good. no, mm. Toby's good. He's he's um he's very good with like, exchanging times and stuff during the yeah. um, qualifiers. So yeah. it'd be awesome to be down there with him. Yeah. Have you trained much with Bailey Martin before? I haven't trained with Bailey Martin. No. So he is. Yeah, no, he's up like, in um, Brisbane now, I think. Yeah, I think he's up at Brizzy. Yeah. That's just down the road from Sydney, isn't it? Is that not <laughs> no. how that works? <laughs> no. Well, it's Australia, not small like New Zealand. Oh. <laughs> no, it's well away. Yeah. Oh, how good. Yeah, because uh, I think Bailey's younger brother might be there. I might have just made that up, but Riley Martin might be there as well. So it could be. Yeah, I think he was He was at Tor- Riley Martin was at Tory, but I don't, mm. I don't know exactly who's going to this thing, to yeah. be honest. I'm just going to show up and just dominate. Do my, do my own thing. Yeah. yeah. No friends on the floor. You kind of win it. Yeah, uh, hard up, man. That'll be good. It'll be a good battle. I'm excited for it. So you've got Down Under. Um, have you done any other comps this year? Down Under is pretty much yeah, the last the one coming up. Um, um, no, the big comps, really. Like, I did a little teams comp, like just a local one the other week. Oh, nice. Yeah. But um, I just got, I got, kind of got thrown into it by, by a few mates. But it was fun. Yeah. I haven't done a local comp in a while just because yeah. I've been focusing on the bigger ones. But um, mm. yeah. No, it's good. Nothing, nothing too crazy coming up. Just do this, and then the goal will be, just, yeah, getting ready for the open. Yeah, and just the whole next season, really. Yeah, prepping for next year. You planning a break over Christmas holidays at all? Um, no big break. Like I'll definitely pull back, sort of over December after I'm down under. Like have a bit of a, like a like a down period, or just like less volume and things like that. Yeah, and then sort of start of next year, I'll slowly start to ramp things up all the way into Torian. Yeah, how do you um how do you tackle the open? So, do you see that as more of a you're still ramping up because you're not cocky or arrogant, but you're confident you're gonna? No, no, like um, well the the open doesn't really yeah. matter too much because what is it top a thousand or something can yeah. do court, like the qualifiers. It used to matter, but um, now it, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> like it's good, it's a good indicator of where you're at, but mm. um. I'm not peaking or anything for the open. Yeah, yeah. Even to be honest, when the open starts is when I st- start to like really ramp things up to get ready for like the qualifiers mm. and then all the way into Torian. Yeah. Okay. That's sort of my mindset now. Because yeah, again, it's like I think it's top a thousand getting in the qualifiers now yeah. from the open. So it doesn't matter too much. So going through the season, um, fuck, here's a question I actually always want to ask. But you, it's never guaranteed you're going to get past Torian. So do you peak for Torian and then how do you carry that momentum on if you, well, not that you, I know you haven't been to the games, but how do you carry that momentum on into the games? Because that's aggressive peaking for something like Torian. Yeah, like I'm sure, like I definitely, after Torian, if I made the games, I'd have a week or two off, mm. like to sort of reset. But um. I think it's just different. Like after touring, I don't really have anything drive me forward mm. like immediately after. So I kind of go through a lull. If I had the games there, it's like out of necessity and I guess the will to win. Like you just keep fucking moving. Yeah. 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 That's good. That's how I think of it anyway, but mm. find out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll find yeah. out next year. Fuck we will, yeah. man. It's exciting. <laughs> it's exciting. On it now. Um, so, so who did you say was on your program again? I've forgotten his name. Oh, Matt Riley. Yeah. Does he does he give you... How does that work? Because um, you, you look at like Proven, HWPO, Mayhem, that kind of stuff. They have their compete tracks. Does he work quite closely with you saying like, this is what we're doing here? Or does he just email you at the end of the week and here's your program? No, no. Like, he lives very... Like he lives close to me. Like we work very closely together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, we're, we're quite close. Like gun, sort of... Yeah, the program is very tailored to me yeah. and what I need to work on and things like that. And even... It's not just programming. It's like a lot of mental, like just talking to me, like talking to me and like making sure it's like, this is where you're supposed to be right now. 
mm. don't get stressed out like is a good like just a top bloke to talk to make sure i'm eating and just everything oh yep. so he's quite hands-on with you in the gym as well very hands-on like awesome. he's more than just a just a coach like yeah that's good like he's, de- he's definitely like my partner in this like there's nothing i've done so far that's like I've, i haven't done this on my own yeah i think that's that's massive uh yeah not just the programming because yeah man you you are a person as well you know and uh, yeah. i think a lot of athletes do get treated like robots sometimes so it's good that you have um have yeah no, gym. he's he's very good it's not just yeah it's not just program not just go do this like yeah like each day we have a goal we talk about it and get after it how good is there any other athletes that he coaches or programs for um like he like he does like at our gym and stuff like he coaches other guys at our gym yeah but no other like sort of Torian athletes at the moment it's mostly to, it's just me and again yeah. like we met six years ago like when i started crossfit nice um and then i kind of looked up to him because i'm like oh he's a regionals athlete like i want to get to that yeah. sort of level and I sort of, yeah, slowly worked on it. He helped me get there, and yeah, yeah, oh, good. What's your um thoughts on? So you look at these training camps and that kind of stuff. Um, what's your thoughts? Do you do you like that kind of environment, or do you prefer that you know your coach is only coaching you? Because you look at the camp, say, and there might be like four or five elite males, and it's like, well, am I getting yeah. the best out of the coach? What's your thoughts yeah, on? like um. I, I like that it's like just me and my coach working on certain things. Like, I feel like you can't make a pro, like everyone's different. Everyone has different weaknesses and different things. Like, so I feel like just going on a standard program that's just made for everyone mm. wouldn't work out. At least not the best for me. Like having that program that's like tailored to all my weaknesses and like I'm working on them constantly has worked or it is working quite well for me at the moment. Mm. But I also do love going to a camp or training with other people every now and then just for that competitive vibe. You always push harder in yeah. that sort of environment as well. Have you, so have, it just have you always been driven to just do individual competition? Like, have you ever considered going on a team? Is that on the cards at all? Oh, maybe in the future, but I'm not too worried about it right now. Plus, I like that individual. It's all on me. There's no one else to rely on. It's like there's no one else to blame. It's like it's all on me. Whatever I put out, like that's mm. that's what I've done. Like, yeah, yeah, that's the beauty of it. Because we talked to um Brandon Swan. I like that. Probably where you're headed with that is that everything is in your control. Mm. So you're not yeah. relying on anyone. Because um yeah, after his tour and he's a bit gutted, but um yeah yeah yeah. Mm. Um, I should ran for is Ben Fowler doing down under? Do we know? I cannot remember. I was a Kiwi guy, Ben Fowler, and um, yeah, he's been team the last couple of years, I think. But if yeah. he's at Down Under, fuck, he'll be the man to watch. Yeah, um, not I, I didn't see him in the qualifiers mm. this year, but um, I know last year he came like second of the qualifiers, so he's right yeah. up there. But he don't he end up attending. Yeah, no, nah, he's the man. He just did um a bunch of stuff in Europe, like Madrid yep. champs and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, he was on the Selwyn team for the games I think a couple of years back so he's the man coming back in Indy um, sorry that's just a random thought that popped in my head man <laughs> sweet ears um, have you got anything else to add to this one no we can roll into the workout rightio um, Peter be kind yep. be kind okay? <laughs> be, be, oh, be, be kind <laughs> so uh, look as we normally end these things we'll get um, these amazing elite athletes to give us an amazing mere mortals a workout to yeah. to complete so far away, man. No, I always used to do this workout. It's just great grip strength workout. It's just 40, 20, 10, butterfly pull-ups and toes to bar. And I still do it to this day. It's just like a great grip strength workout. Nice. And like, it's just good to track. Like when I first started doing it, it'd take me like eight minutes. And like I've just slowly gotten better and better over the years. So have you ever done it? Have you ever done it unbroken? Um, I think I've done all the butterflies unbroken, and then I think I had to break up the toes to bar the first set into twenty and twenty. Right. And then the rest was unbroken. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you do um, th- oh, finishing off a set of thirty unbroken muscle ups on on IG is fucking mental. Mm. yeah well i got i got g'd up to do that like they're like you're gonna go on broke i'm like i will if you want me to oh true yeah. <laughs> so there was um mayhem released the workout a couple of weeks back and um it was nuts it was 30 bar muscle ups for time but yeah. it started 
with three chester bars. Oh no, three pull ups, three chester bars, three toaster bar. That was a yep. buy in, and then you could start your bar muscle ups. And every time you came off the bar, you had to do the the buy in. Buy in again. So you, like, yeah. I think I don't know if anyone. So you went three, 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 and then you couldn't even drop then. You had to go into your first bar muscle up. I yep. don't know if anyone went thirty unbroken after that, but. You reckon That'd you got it? Spice. That'd be grippy as. I can give it a crack. Yeah. yeah All right, Peter's on. gonna do it. <laughs> I want to see it. Cut it again. All right, yeah. Um. Oh, okay. Well, that's not the worst workout we've had, but uh, I'm sure it'll get the grip firing. Um, yeah, we get the grip going. How good, radio. Uh, before we give you a worse workout if you want. There's been no, no, ones no, 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 no. out the door and bombed and stuff. You only get one shot, Peter. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anyone you want to shout out quickly? Uh, before we head away. Um, yeah, I'll just shout out my coach, Matt Riley. How Help good. me. Like, everything I've done so far, like, yeah, big yep. props to him. Awesome. He sounds like a good dude. And I think that's uh, what a lot of top athletes uh, are missing. You see them, you know, they'll be with one training camp for a year and then they jump to the next one, they jump to the next one. I think find yeah. someone that is not just a coach, but is like more of a mentor like to help you you know because yeah. it's fucking it's it, it's a massive toll on you guys what you go through um yeah it's very mental like yeah like it's not just physical like even though it looks from the outside like just a physical sport like it's a lot of mental like battles as well like mm. flipping from thinking you're unstoppable to like not good mm. enough and just everything in between like and that's multiple times in a day like you just back and forth back and forth oh it's crazy and i think um something like torian right you get you 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 probably do what six workouts a day when you're peaking, right? At Torian, you do six workouts over three days, so you have you don't have the ma- you don't have the biggest chance to show what you can do um, over those yeah. six. And it, the amount of training that goes into it to try perform over six workouts, yeah. At the end of it, if you miss out, you've just you feel like you feel like not that you have you feel like you know fuck was all was any of that worth it. So, yeah, no, I mm. definitely get that. Like, you put a yeah. lot into it. And because there's no, like, you don't get told the workouts until a couple of weeks out. You basically got to train for everything mm. and then hope you got all your bases covered. Mm. Oh, well, you're but, doing phenomenal, bro. The the proof is in the putting your performance out on the floor. It's, it's unreal. So, yeah. right up. thanks, boys. Oh, hey, well. thanks for, no, thank you. Thank you for sitting down, bro. Oh, really good. appreciate this one. And awesome. uh, we're, we look forward to seeing what you do next year, bro. It's going to be good. Me too. We'll see you at Torium, bro. Appreciate it. All good. See you, boys. All right, right, man. Catch you. Have a good one.